While we were all gone the entire weekend racing, Jeremy was up at the farm helping my dad, Father's Day weekend, getting ready to plant beans. The weather has not been very good for dad to get his work done out in the field. But finally, everything seems to have dried out and they've got everything disked up, ready to plant. Luckily, they had everything pretty well finished up by Sunday because Monday morning, <laughs> we're back to race car stuff. I hope Jeremy's in a good mood this morning. Even if he is, it's probably not gonna last long. He showed up right after we got this thing pushed in the garage. And let's just say he was less than impressed that I had managed to break this thing in less than seven days this time. I think the look on his face pretty much tells you where this conversation's about to go. Take this. What for? Because I want to see if this is going to be true or not. What? Why don't you go up there and hit my anvil with this rubber mallet. I want to see if it breaks in half. Welcome to Old Man's Garage. We're going to be looking back at a whole month of broken 10 bolt stuff repeatedly over and over and over again. Now I must admit, I have had my fair share or more than my fair share of bad luck with the 10 bolt in the Malibu. And as you can see here, we have a 10 bolt. And as you can see, this one as well is broken. Pieces were everywhere. I'll admit it's not good, but it's not as bad as the last time. If you missed last week's episode, we had that too. <laughs> the week before that's episode, again, broken 10 bolt. Broken 10 bolts. Broken 10 bolts. <laughs> Broken 10 bolts. Well, there you have it. That's a broken 10 bolt. Fortunately, the 10 bolt in the Malibu wasn't the only thing I managed to tear up this weekend. On our way home from Magnolia Sunday morning, I had a blowout on the trailer. But luckily, Kenny and Bill Bybee were following along and stopped to help me get the tires switched out. Luckily, the aluminum wheel's okay, but it sure made a mess out of the side of my trailer. But by Monday afternoon, when Billy and I got back with his Nova from Box Performance, Kenny had the trailer all cleaned up and you couldn't hardly tell it had ever happened. So all I need to do now is take my wheel and tire down to the tire shop and get a new tire for the trailer. And we've got some work to do on the Nova tonight to get ready to test, hopefully, later on this week. Monday evening, Vicki went into town to get pizza for everybody and Billy and Tommy came over to have a little meeting and discuss what we plan to do later this week as far as the Nova and to get ready for the weekend because we plan on going down to Clay City, Kentucky. Billy wants to clean up some things on the Nova, go over a few fittings that are leaking, and he wants to get these headlights wired up. He went ahead and hot wired one side just to check things out and we've still got some work to do on the S10 and the Falcon. So we've got our plate full this week in order to make it to Clay City, Kentucky this weekend. The idea is to possibly take the Nova if we can get it ready and get it tested before the weekend. Someone contacted Billy late this afternoon that there's a track rental going on at Trails tomorrow. So if everything works out, we may end up taking the Nova down there for that. So anyway, we wrap things up Monday night in the shop and then first thing Tuesday morning, Jeremy brought my mom and dad's blazer down to drop it off and pick up my dually so he could take it up to the farm and do some maintenance on it. It needs oil changed, transmission fluid changed, and I'm starting to hear a little bit of noise out of the rear end in this thing. So it's definitely time for a rear axle service. The old truck's got 350 some thousand miles on it, so it's hard to tell what he's gonna find once he digs into that. So after I helped Jeremy unhook from the trailer, I loaded up some alcohol drums and my blown out tire off the trailer into Miss Vicky's 64, and then me and June Pup head out to run our errands. Since Scrappy went home with Tommy last night, she's got the seat all to herself. So anyway, we head down to Hebron to drop this wheel and tire off first at Bowman Goodyear. They usually keep my size trailer tires in stock just in case I need them. After we got done at Bowman's, I stopped and put a little bit of fuel in the truck, and then me and June Pup took advantage of this beautiful weather for a little ride down to Logan to Basil Oil. With potentially three race cars headed to Kentucky this weekend, I wanna make sure we've got plenty of alcohol. So anyway, me and June Pup patiently wait outside for them to fill our drums, and then they bring the drums back and load them in the back of the 64 very carefully. I ran into the office and paid for my fuel, and then once we had our drums loaded, 
me and June Pup turned and burned back towards home. And by the time we got back there, Kenny and Harley had already cleaned up mom and dad's blazer and Harley was inside of it with the vacuum finishing up the interior. The old blazer cleaned up pretty good for as old as it is with the original paint and interior. Meanwhile, inside the shop, Uncle Rob's busy doing some wiring on the headlights and turn signals on the front of Billy's Nova. And it sounds like if we can get this car finished up, we're definitely gonna be able to take it to trails and test it this afternoon. While we're all busy down at the shop getting that Nova ready, Uncle Bucko has taken the dually up to the farm so he can put it on the lift up there and compile a list of parts he needs down at Mark's. Good grief. Evidently, his attitude hasn't improved since he left the house this morning. You got my stuff together or I what? I just got your last bit of stuff there. Jesus. Uncle Bucko. In typical Jeremy fashion, he takes this opportunity to start bashing on me for breaking the Malibu again. I gave him a rubber mallet and told him to hit my anvil. Really? Yeah, he wanted to know why. I was like, I want to see if the motherfucker's in half. <laughs> so while Uncle Bucko's down at Mark's giving him a hard time, me and Kenny Power start unloading these drums of alcohol out of the back of Miss Vicky's 64 C10. I want to put one of them in the shop, and the other one goes in the race car trailer to take with us to Kentucky this weekend. As me and Kenny are finishing up that project, Billy and Rob are in the shop laying the scales out underneath his Nova, going over everything one more time before they load it up in my big race car trailer and head to trails. And that's about the time I get bad news from Uncle Bucko up at the farm. He's pulled the diff cover off my dually and found some unpleasant surprises. What we have here is a failure to maintenance. Uh-oh. Bearing not there. Lack of maintenance. You think it ends there? Oh, no. Not only do I have a major problem going on with the rear differential, the O2 sensors blew out of the exhaust system on the way home from Magnolia the other night, right before the trailer tire blew. So needless to say, it doesn't look like my dually will be making the trip to Kentucky this weekend. What's up everybody? Welcome back to the shop. Uh, <laughs> today has been rough on me. <laughs> it's just been one thing after another. I found out today, of course, like you saw in the video, the dually's got a lot of problems. I've known for a while that the ring and pinion started to make a little bit of noise in it, a little whining noise. And it's never done that. And uh, I've been wanting to get it in here and get it serviced, just haven't had time. And uh, finally, uh, <laughs> we made time and run it up there. We find out the uh, pinion bearings are out of it. One of them, the inner bearing, completely out of it. So uh, Jeremy's gonna try and run to Good Ale tomorrow in Columbus and pick up parts to put a new ring and pinion and all new bearings and everything in the dually. Uh, I don't know whether or not we're going to get that truck fixed for the weekend. Uh, if we can get it fixed for the weekend, uh, then there's a good chance that we can take all three cars down to Kentucky. I don't know if Billy plans to enter all three of them or not, but, uh, you know, the Nova is not really proven yet. Now I haven't shown it yet in this video, but we did get to go to trails today and test the Nova. Still having a little pressure, oil pressure issue with it. Uh, we're still working on that. Uh, the new pan has made a big difference in it. It has definitely helped, but there's still a question about some of the things that we're seeing in the uh, data on the Holly about the oil pressure. So we're still up in the air on that. I'm not sure whether or not we're going to be able to take the Nova regardless, but one way or the other, we're going to be there with the truck and the Falcon, and we'll just do the best we can with what we got. That's what we've always done. So the, the test session tonight at Trails went really good, uh, other than the oil pressure, but uh, the car, the suspension, uh, the front suspension and steering, everything looked really good. And you'll see all that in tomorrow's video on Street Racing Channel. Tommy's at home right now, editing and working on that. But I'm really proud of Billy and Rob. They've done a fantastic job building this car. And I think the most, I mean, obviously the fabrication work and everything is one thing, but the biggest thing I'm proud of Billy about is the fact that he's tuning this car himself. Uh, I made the comment the other day that Chief has been helping him quite a bit, and at that time, Chief hadn't really been helping him. And uh, so I apologize to Billy for that. 
but since then, you know, they've talked a few times, but, um, the, the, the biggest thing for me right now is that, you know, Billy's tuning this thing himself. We're not relying on someone, uh, to tune the engine for us. We don't have to worry about whether or not somebody's going to allow us to have all the power or be able to outrun somebody else just because they're tuning somebody else's car too. We're not going to worry about that. We're going to rely on our own knowledge, our own abilities from the front bumper to the parachute mount. It's all on our family and Robbie and the people who have helped us. And I'm very proud of that. Very, very proud of that. That means a lot to me because um, I've always been uh, one that hasn't really relied on anybody else to help tune my engines or my cars or, you know, and what, what we've been able to do with a carburetor on a small block and a stock chassis, stock suspension S10 is pretty good. So I feel like now that we've got something a little better than that, um, <laughs> I think we're going to do okay. It's just going to take some time. You know, we're not going to come out of the gate and just win everything. It's not going to be like that. It's never like that. That's a fairy tale. But, uh, you know, we've gotten a really good start so far. Uh, and we've got some very, very intelligent, very smart, very talented people uh, behind us. Uh, and not for financial gain. It's not because we're paying them. <laughs> it's just because they sincerely like our family. They like who we are. They like the way we race. They like who we are as, uh, as individuals and they sincerely want to see us do well. I'll take that over a paid tuner any day of the week. Also, I wanted to mention tonight that, um, after dinner, uh, chief and Jackie had uploaded a video, a new video on Midwest street cars channel. And out of all the videos I've ever seen uh, on YouTube, anywhere for that matter, uh, that are geared towards helping people, uh, especially with uh, a budget combination, such as a small block nitrous car. Uh, Chief and Jackie have got that little red Corvette and they've been out testing it. And when you watch Billy's video tomorrow, you're going to probably notice some similarities. And I'm kind of proud of this, to be honest with you. Uh, Chief uh, and I, two totally different people, two totally different backgrounds. But I told him the other day, I think we share the same wiring diagram because he and I think a lot alike. Um, if you notice... Uh, in the comments on my Malibu videos, I take a lot of heat from people in there uh, complaining, you don't ever turn the nitrous on. Who cares what it runs on motor? Turn the, turn the jug on and see what it goes. And uh, that's a real good way to get lost. Uh, and I was really happy tonight. I was really excited um, personally because it, uh, you know, I'm nobody. Uh, just old guy trying to help my kids and don't really have much, but uh, the way I go about systematically tuning uh, was substantiated tonight by a lot of what Chief said in his video. If you haven't watched it yet, I would very much encourage you to go to Midwest Streetcars and watch the latest video that Chief put up, uh, and he talks extensively about the importance of what I call it is the importance of the footer. <laughs> when you when you're building something, if you're building a house, you start at the footer. You can't you can't dig the footer and then just start putting the two by four studded walls right on top of the footer. You got to lay the block. You got to make sure you're square. You got to make sure that you're level. And a lot of that is uh, what Chief talked about tonight in his testing video with the Corvette. Yeah, it didn't look that fast in the video. Um, but it didn't look all that slow either. Maybe it did to some of you, but the fact of the matter is he's not going to get lost. He's not going to let Jackie get lost. He went out there and tested this thing on motor and he's going to make sure that the, the tune up on motor is 100% right 
before you turn the jug on. And I've, I've caught a lot of hell from people in the comments because I've made a lot of motor hits on that Malibu. And if you notice in all my videos, I always try and make a motor hit first to see what it runs on motor because I wanna know what the tune-up is on motor before I turn the jug on. Is it, if the tune-up on motor isn't right, then the tune-up on the jug is not gonna be right either. And it's really easy to get lost. If you just wanna go out there and turn it on and, and beat it up, and maybe come out a winner, maybe come out a big loser if you tear it up. But, you know, if you want to swing that way, that's up to you. But um, if you're looking for every ounce of power, every thousandth of a second of ET out of a combination, if you're trying to get every last penny that you've spent on an engine combination or a nitrous combination or a turbo, it doesn't matter what it is, you have to start somewhere. And you have to take low boost or a, a, a motor pass or whatever and you've got to get everything out of that first because that's your base that's your footer you can't build on quicksand <laughs> you can but it won't turn out very good anyway things are looking up we'll see how things go tomorrow i did find out today that my generator on my trailer belt broke on that that's a sore subject i gotta pull the generator back out of my trailer tomorrow and take it back up to my uncle tim and uh, unfortunately, he's got a back problem right now. He's kind of under the weather. So uh, I'm not sure if we're going to have the good generator that goes in my trailer for the weekend or not. We may have to rely on my Honda, my spare, which is fine. It's just not as convenient. We can't start it up and run it uh, with the trailer going down the road to run the air conditioning or keep things cool. That's no big deal, though. We'll get through that. But uh, we've got some work left to do on the S10 tomorrow. Um We've got some work to do on the Falcon. We need to put tires on, and Billy's found a set of tires. They're being shipped here, and so we should have brand new tires for the weekend. That's good news. And I think Miss Vicky's got details for everybody. All right, Squirrely, you're up. Oh, is it my turn? It's your turn. It's at, what, only 12.30. <laughs> Don't even start making I know, excuses. I know. Don't I'm even tired. start making excuses. I've been working hard. I know you have. Look, we all have. We have. What? I have girly. I have a lot of ladies in my messenger and at events. Like, when can we get it online? Well, I'm putting it online tonight. I have new t-shirts. Very good. Purple, green, gray, peach, like all the colors with glitter. So I'm working hard on that and getting them online tonight. Well, don't look like you got very many of them. No, this is just a few. This weekend, we are headed to Clay City, Kentucky. It is a two-day event, Friday and Saturday. It costs 25 to get in each day. They have discounts for kids. The racing starts at eight o'clock at night, both days. So you won't be in the heat. It won't be too terrible. It's gonna be a good time. Friday, they are racing from the eighth mile to the quarter. So it'll kind of be like street style with Limpy on the flashlight. Mm -hmm. Pour your own puddle, our kind of thing. Yep. Then Saturday, they start the normal at the tree mm -hmm. and it's instant green. And there's a big pot Saturday. It's like 20 grand to win, hmm. guaranteed small tire, something hmm. like that. I don't know. It's gonna be a you good time. You don't know, this is the details. Well, I'm just saying, it's gonna be exciting racing both days, both Friday night and Saturday night. And we have merch and we don't know yet what all we're bringing, but we'll be there with something to race, right? Right, right, <laughs> we'll be there with something to race. All right. 